Hi right, YouTube, welcome back for another video. Uh, we got another Larry Bird video. Uh, when Larry Bird's trash talking backfired. I have watched the video. I wonder who it was he was playing against that um, the trash talking backfired on. I have no idea. Enough talking. Let's get, let's just get right to the video. Make sure I subscribe first. And all that good stuff. And um, let's go. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to my show. I'm Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the rivalry between Dominique Wilkins and Larry Bird. Oh, at the one time that I can recall Dominique. where Larry Bird's trash talking actually backfired. But before we start with this episode, a quick shout out to my Patreons. Thanks a lot, you guys, for supporting the show. It's really appreciated. If you also want to support the show, please check out my Patreon page. All right, you guys, enough said. Let's dive right into today. Today's episode. I had a feeling it's gonna be the Dummy Wilkins, uh, maybe Dennis Rodman, Michael Jordan, uh, Magic. One of those. Yeah, well, the great at it is slowing the game down, making you play at their yeah. pace. And having one of the greatest players to ever lace a pair of shoes up in Larry Bird, yeah. in a half court situation, he was he was evil. I mean you couldn't beat him. <laughs> He said it was evil. Now, Damn. where exactly does this rivalry actually start? Well, let me take you back to the year 1982, where Dominique Wilkins entered the NBA. After having a successful run at the University of Georgia, Dominique was selected by the Utah Jazz with the third pick before he then joined the Atlanta Hawks. In this draft class, Dominique easily could have been the first pick, but the Lakers selected James Worthy instead. Not a bad choice. Imagine if they did pick Dominique Wilkins the first pick. They would have had a nasty squad. But I, and I'm saying that James Worthy wasn't that good, but hey. Choice either. Dominique was a super explosive hey. small forward that already earned the nickname the human highlight film even before he entered the NBA. But no matter how cool your nickname was, once you get to the NBA, yeah, you gotta earn your stripes. And no vet would give you respect unless you really earned it. At that time, the Celtics were known exactly for that. A team with countless all-stars would not even talk to you unless you proved that you really belonged. <laughs> when the Celtics and the Hawks would meet on the 30th of October in 1982, Larry Bird did not know too much about the rookie named I was Dominic three years Wilkins. Old. And once the game started, it looked like Larry Bird would have an easy <clears throat> game against the rookie, scoring on Dominique and talk noise into Dominique's ear. But how could Larry Bird know that Dominic Wilkins was no ordinary rookie? Let's take a look at how Dominic Wilkins would respond. Like the Hawks want to run, they find Wilkins. Look at it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wilkins would respond. Like the Hawks want to run, they find Wilkins. Look out. Ooh. I think that's dunk because so I was just mad because I just got burnt three or four times by Larry. <laughs> See how you made your YouTube channel. Do you, you see how he made views, Larry Bird sit more down? Subscribers, more watch time, and of course, make. And that was probably just a dunk out of anger. You know, I said, "Give me the ball in the wing." Yeah, that was kind of angry. I was trying to figure out why Larry Bird jumped because it was Nick's rookie year. He didn't know better, and that would <laughs> that would break your fingers. Like you would have your fingers broke if you really put your hand out there. You know, because Nani's only dunked it. He cocked it behind his head. Larry Bird was just at the wrong place at, at the, the wrong, wrong time. time. No matter how big and strong a guy is, if somebody is coming at you full speed, they have a really huge advantage. Really and he good. went over Larry Bird, and Larry Bird just spun around at the top <laughs> and sat down it just on said the court, to... sat there and said, Man, I just saw something firsthand that's unbelievable. I Leroy think that Dale. this has to be the moment where the rivalry really started. They would have countless battles for many years to come. And the one game that sticks out the most to me was Game 7 of the 1988 playoffs. A game that would go down in NBA history. Hawks seem to be standing on this trip down the floor. That plagued them, I thought, hmm. late in the second. It doesn't matter if he's going to hit shots like that. Casey Jones. 
Oh my god. Wide open. He wouldn't know from making jump shots, but hey, he was hitting. Pull up. Give it to the end. That bird do this thing too, but but he wouldn't expect it from Dominique. He's making all kinds of tough shots. But hey, this man bird, but Dominique making tough shots too. Hey. Hey. I guess Dominique didn't have a left hand. He did have a left hand, but he couldn't dribble left hand. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's tough. That's a good game. Hey! Oh, I thought he was about to dunk on him. Hey, Trent Rollins that blocked it. Turnaround is unguardable. Now let's have a look and see exactly the numbers that those two would have once they battled each other. Now they played a total of 42 times against each other in the regular season. Yeah, the Boston Everton Celtics is obviously a stronger team than the Hawks, so that's why Larry Bird actually won 30 in comparison to 12. But if we take a look at the other numbers, then you will see that it's a pretty close call, especially when it comes to scoring. Dominic Wilkins beating Larry Bird by 1 point, 26 yeah, to 25. Incredible numbers. Now some of you guys will actually remember that I had Dominic Wilkins on my show and I actually asked him about his robbery. So let me show you the clip because it was pretty interesting oh, to hear what it's Dominic had to say. Your first interaction with Larry Bird was a very rude awakening. What do you recall from, from that first meeting and what was it like having the, the final laugh? Well, you know what? The, the, the funny thing is, you know, when you're a rookie coming to the league, you're a hot shot rookie, and you, you think you're. I think you know, this was on a different uh, and, you know, video. Have a way to you know, react to. You got to pay your dues, and and that was one of the situations with me and Larry. I went to shake his hand; he wouldn't shake my hand. And I remember saying to myself, well, maybe he's just getting into the game. And I remember the first play of the game. He said, you don't even belong in this league, Holmes. And he shoots a three. I'm like, I wasn't mad. He made the three. I said, did he just call me Holmes? <laughs> you know, but. Uh, I remember after the first time, you know, I made a good play against so I know he, I remember him saying, he said, you know, you got, you, you got some toughness, man. I like you, but he said, I'm still getting 40 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he got about 38, so he kind of proved his point. <laughs> now, back in the days, there were many black players who open. I mean, for example, Cedric Maxwell, for example, who, who openly admit that they thought Larry Bird was overrated until they actually got to play against him. Uh, when was your moment where you thought, okay, this kid is for real? The first day I played against him. <laughs> first day I played. I mean, I knew he was a, a, a super player before I came into the NBA, but when I had a chance to play against Larry Bird, and there's the only I can count on one hand the type of guys like him that you had to be totally, totally focused in on. If you didn't, he would embarrass you. Yeah, he would. Just as simple as that. He, he, he embarrassed a lot of players. Basketball IQ off the charts, and he found different ways to beat you. Yeah. Now, I did some research, and you and Michael Jordan are 
the guys with the uh, most high scoring games against the Boston Celtics in the Larry Bird era. Were you like always, always extra motivated when you played against Larry? Of course, absolutely. You had to be. be. I mean, because you got to. You, you, know, you be. had to be able to meet someone else or match someone else's will. And if you didn't match his will, I mean, it, it was a long night for you. But if you're not ready to play against the best players, play the game. You know, you, you're in the wrong sport. Right. Because that's what it's about. It's about competing at the highest level and bringing out the best in one another. And we did that. All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. If you like this video, do me a favor. Please like the video. Also, if you want to get more content of my show, please subscribe to the channel. All right, you guys, enough said. Take care and goodbye. You all be healthy. All right, bro. Man, Dominique and Larry Bird was going at it that game. Damn, I had a feeling it was going to be Dominique um, when Larry Bird tries talking backfire. But um, uh, let me know what y'all think about the video. I know what most of you guys are thinking about Larry Bird. Like he's the greatest. He's he's up there as being one of the greatest of all time. But um, a lot of people could say he's the number one, number two, number three. But um. More likely he's gonna be in top five regardless of who says what. Uh but that bird is a great player, but he was a great player, man. Well, um yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new, comment down below what you think about the video. Um any more ideas, comment below and I got you guys. And um uh, till next time you boy can't smooth, I'm out.